My biggest play, of course, was, uh, which is what I'm most famous for, is Pancake Swap. Top, you're a top 10 holder in Pancake Swap. I was swap. a top 10 holder. I owned 1% of the circle, not of the circulating supply, the whole supply. I owned 1% of the supply, sub 50 cents or sub $25 million market cap, something ridiculous. And I rode that up to $2.6 billion market cap. So much so that I uh, tattooed it on my neck. So how much did you make from that investment? Millions. <laughs> that was it. It was a good opportunity. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. Enough to put me away for the rest of my life. Yeah. I From that play alone, I could live 30 years just from that. How much money was it? A lot. Like, you would care to see that amount? Over five. Over five million dollars? Yeah. Nice. Amazing. The goal is what people don't understand is that the goal in business is to make money, but then you got to multiply the money. Yeah. And it's easier to multiply it through investments and through high risk, high yield opportunities. Because when you're young, like we are, you can take risks. Yeah. You can do things that most people aren't willing to do. You you can, you can be aggressive. You don't you have can a be aggressive. to feed. Exactly. And that's what I did. I was aggressive. But just like I made, you know, five to seven million dollars in a day in crypto, which is where I made most of my money. I've also lost a ton of money. Right. Because I realized that if you want to play Play big right and yeah. you want to make a lot of money you have to be able to bet big as well yeah. and that's what people don't talk about you see it on the news you see it on on yahoo or cnbc you see a fund lose 100 million dollars or 200 million dollars and you don't actually think about how much money that actually is yeah. but that's a bet so i came to realize i'm no longer in the business of doing bets for drop shipping i'm no no longer betting on 50 dollar ad sets and shit of that nature i'm here doing 10 million plus deals that's the game that i'm in at this point because since you're expending the same amount of time and energy might as well secure a bigger bag yeah no definitely we're gonna and we're gonna talk about all those crypto ventures but <laughs> before we get into it i want to talk a bit about the drop shipping days how long like how's the drop shipping journey the e-commerce business when did you make your first money let's say your first million dollar month or even went on to make your first million dollar day talk us through that 2000 first of all do you care to say what you were selling on, on oh yeah I'll, I'll 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 tell you what my what like my biggest niche was my biggest niche was home products mm. why because i understood that i needed a few things in order to succeed in drop shipping one is i needed an evergreen market i needed to sell a product that wasn't a one-off mm. i did i couldn't have one-time customers Consumable. i needed repeat customers with long and high lifetime value retention i needed my customers to be worth more than $14 mm. and spending a ton of money and paying Zuck to give me these customers because I understood how complicated it was going to be because the model was very simple. Therefore, it could be replicated. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let's make our money with drop shipping. It's really good. But also we need to be adapting on everything that's back end. Our SMS flows, our email marketing, our ability to build a funnel of products based on- Where'd you learn all this stuff from? It, bro, it's all on the internet and it's logic. If you're thinking about a customer journey, right? Let's say you enter turn to my business. Yeah. A lot of this has to do with logic. People are like, oh, where, where did you learn this shit? Where did you read this? Sometimes you just have to sit down and analyze. Think. Sometimes you just have to sit down and think. Mm -hmm. Most people don't think. They don't have any time to think. They're always scrolling away and they're- They they're have time. They don't make it. Yeah. They don't make time to, they they don't don't make make time to think. And when you understand that thinking is actually a skill, you begin to develop it. Yeah. How thinking think? is a skill set. I spent, in fact, it was about eight to 12 months sitting around a fire. Literally, it was my job to sit around the fire and we were just masterminding. I would bring different people into my house i would come spend a few weeks with us and we literally sit down and mastermind i didn't make money for those that period of time we were making you know 100 200k a month light work but i spent my entire time developing how to think and what i realized is with drop shipping specifically is that in order for you to have a winning niche you need a couple things the first one is an evergreen ecosystem your ability to continuously sell in perpetuity okay the second thing is you need a big enough audience okay. so your pool of customers yeah. if you're trying to scale to a million dollar day you can't have a 200,000 person audience. You need a big market. You need a big market. Target the masses. So that's why I was like, okay, let me sell household products mm -hmm. because every Everybody. person is going to need this in perpetuity, always and forever. 100%. And then finally, I was like, I need to make sure because a lot of people drop ship and they try to finesse Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, I'm not in the business of finessing Facebook. I want to have a good relationship with Facebook. Yeah. They are giving me the ability to advertise. I want a good relationship. Yeah, you can't bite down so, the feed too. Exactly. So I built a uh, good relationships with reps. I had good ad credit. Credits. And what I came to realize is I can actually still succeed and follow their terms and conditions. So when COVID rolled around, which was our first kind of like million dollar day, was million dollars in a day light work. I've done five million dollars in a day profit. It's nothing, bro. What you're looking at here, Dubai, what I'm doing is pennies. Do you can Dubai these mother printing a billion dollars a day? So when all these kids on the internet, they're like, oh, five million dollars, there's no way. Dude, you have no 
<laughs> idea the level of wealth there is out there and your peewee brain can't get it, it's okay. So $5 million is chump change. I see it as, so a lot of people are like, oh, $5 million, show the receipts. Bro, my is out here doing a billion a day. And the receipts are there because they've seen your projects. Oh yeah, you can see the projects. You can literally go on my highlights where I'm literally telling my to literally buy every single thing that I bought. I told people to literally buy Board Ape Yacht Club at Fort ETH, where I was literally buying them up. People didn't listen. I told people to cash out of crypto at $4,000 in ETH. I sold all my ETH at $3,950, every single penny of it. I have order blocks on my Binance that show million to $2 million sales at that price. Most people were greedy at the time. They wanted most, to work for more. Most people are gambling. Mm. Most people most people don't understand that the goal is to, to uh, accumulate wins. It's compounding wins that matter. It's not this idea of one big massive one win. big win, dude. I'm in the business of big wins now, but when I started off, I wasn't in the business of a big win. I needed consecutive wins. Why? I needed to build up my self-esteem. I needed to build up my dubs and I needed to build up the confidence that I could actually do bigger deals. Yeah. So anyways, so then the final aspect of this dropshipping ecosystem was, like I said, having a good relationship with Facebook and having a good relationship with the advertising platforms and making sure that you can follow the rules and you can succeed that way. Why? Because they will push your stuff if your content and your product and your ad is good, right? Because yeah. they don't, if they're pulling people out of the platform, they want to make sure that the customer is having a good experience. Right. Otherwise, it's, it's their, their, exactly. their, their customer. Attention. So when COVID rolled around and they were, they banned masks and they banned uh, hand sanitizers because my like going super hard and super greedy and charging four or five X and scamming people. I said, hmm, maybe instead of selling it to people, which was banned, I sell it to animals. So I started selling, you know, these health products and these sanitation products, but it was niche to pets. Huh. And that was not circumventing the policy. Therefore we had crazy viral ads because the fear was the same. You just redirected, right? Yeah. To a different a different scenario. So we, I think we had the top 10 ad of Facebook, top 10 or top 20 of all time. I think it had over 250 million views wow. on the ad. How much did you spend for that ad? <laughs> millions of dollars bro because it was over months so what exactly is the product like what? i can't say exactly the product because it still works uh, i can't okay. tell you what the product is but i've given you the niche right which is household products and i've told you that we niched it to pets to pets sanitation products for pets sanitation products for pets we repurposed it mm -hmm. so that's how we operated it and it works super well i'll give all the drop shippers in the e-commerce because uh, kids a little freebie yeah um what really helped us in our ecosystem in our ability to because your ad is an ecosystem it's not just a placement that's what people don't understand your ad is designed right by nature to just be in front of people then what the ad actually is in yeah. the ecosystem that you build around the ad begins to kick in what do i mean by this that there's multiple things inside your ad that people don't take into account that if you take into account you're going to reduce your cpms you're going to increase your conversions and you're going to make sure that you're saving money in advertising what is this a few things you have your copy you have your creative you have your comment section you have your customers you have the, your viewers and you have your retargeting that's your like variables most people only look at their creative and only look copy. at their copy. Yeah. That's it. Nobody looks at the comment section. Mm. So what did we do? We began treating the comment section, understanding that if people commented in They're the comment interested. section, Facebook would trigger it Boost as people post. being interested, therefore boosting the post and reducing our CPM. Engagement, yeah. So what would we do? We engagement farmed real conversations like a Reddit forum. Mm. So what would happen? Lady A would hop into our ad, right? Yeah. And she would be in a scenario where we're like, oh, this is a cool product. It would be nice for my dog. Mm. Most would go on the drop shipping a comment, right? And be like, oh, well, that's cool. You can get it for 50% off. Here's the link. Yeah. What did we do? Cultivate relationships with customers. Oh, that's great. Do you mind sharing a photo of your dog? Mm. Boom. Next person, that's a cute dog. Oh, perfect. Do you have a dog? Please post a photo of your dog. Then we would co trigger controversy. So we would have an account that would be like, I don't like that dog. <laughs> it's an ugly dog. It's an ugly dog. And people would go crazy yeah. and comment. But don't Facebook, call my dog ugly. But Facebook doesn't know the difference. Therefore, we began to have extremely cheap CPMs, massively cheap CPMs that we'd never seen be before. CPMs for the people that don't know what that is, yeah. CPM, that's cost per thousand mil it's in Spanish or in Latin, cost per thousand. So we were able to reduce based off of that strategy that I just told you guys, our advertising cost by 160X. And it's so simple. Our shit was so clean, dude. That's how these, so when people say dropshipping is dead, dropshipping ain't dead. Your ability to market and your ability to move and redevelop and reinvent your strategies is dead. Mm.
Mm. What used to work no longer works. Yeah. But drop shipping is going to be around for the next couple hundred years. How it looks like, how it's formatted is different. People have been drop shipping for thousands of years. What is drop shipping? Your ability to arbitrage a, pro a product that you've never seen. We just started using Shopify on the internet. Before it used to be QVC yeah. and it used to be the shit that you would see online. And it's going to be the next thing in the next time, yeah. right? So the model will exist in perpetuity. How the model is expressed the technology. will change. The technology. And that's really where well. you have to adapt. Yeah. So if people are like, oh, Facebook is Oh, my ads are shit. Oh, Shopify. drop shipping is dead. Yeah. Oh, my tracking PayPal. pixel is terrible. I can't process payments. Those are all excuses. And excuses are for fucking losers. You have to adapt. Uh, exactly. You adapt or you die. Yeah. Sink or swim. <laughs>